Hey guys, welcome back to the bench. So we were talking to a friend of ours last week and he brought it to our attention that it may not be immediately obvious what the Orion is or what we're doing with it when we show it to you in our videos. So to clear all of that up, I wanted to show you something that would be impossible without it. We'll start with a piece of sterling silver wheat chain. Taking it to the millimeter gauge, you can see it's only about a millimeter and a half in diameter for the entire chain. And the individual links themselves are only about half a millimeter in diameter. I'll have to polish the chain beforehand because I won't be able to once we're done. Next, I'll use a set of nail clippers to split the end link of the chain. And a set of fine tip diamond tweezers to help me open it up. With the end link split, I'll need John's help to weave it back through in the right spot to keep the chain's pattern correct. This actually required John to use a 30 power jeweler's head loop to accomplish. Continuing to use the fine tip diamond tweezers to hold the split link in place, I'll use a very low power setting to fusion weld the ends back together. With one link done, I'll need John's help again to split the odd man out link and reweave it back into its correct place. Needless to say, this was no easy task. Once it was in place, I repeated the weld process to close it as well. The weld process actually leaves the links as shiny as though they had been polished. So, all I needed was a quick trip to the steamer to remove the leftover carbon charring, and I was finished. By way of explanation for what you just saw me do, you'll need a bit of history. Historically, jewelers have used a flame torch to solder or braze their pieces together. Torches have a few drawbacks. They require the entire piece you're working on to be covered in an oxygen barrier, like borax. Getting solder to create a proper joint requires you to clean absolutely everything on the piece first as well as ensure a meticulous fit between the pieces being joined. Lastly, the entire torch process is just time consuming. In recent years, the advancement of technology has allowed jewelers to do those same jobs with a high powered laser. Now that's great because you no longer require that oxygen barrier and you don't really have to scrub the piece. The laser pulse is just gonna ablate any organic material or contaminants that are left on the metal before it creates the joint. Truthfully, the only downside to a laser are, well, really two things. The first off, it has a tendency to scatter the energy of the pulse because the pieces that you're working on are very reflective. And that can end in one of two things, either a gemstone exploding or a hole all the way through your hand. I speak from experience, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the Orion is a pulse arc welder. It operates on the same principle that a TIG welder does in that it uses a tungsten probe and a argon shielding gas. 
Now, in practice, it's nearly identical to the laser. The only difference is it's a lot more difficult to miss your mark, and I can't put a hole through my hand with it. Now, what you saw me do there, putting this bracelet on my wrist with no seam whatsoever, fusion welding every single half millimeter diameter link back together, just a hair's breadth from the arteries that run down my wrist, would not be possible with a torch, and at the absolute best would be ill-advised with a laser. But in either case, there you have it guys, an impossible bracelet. Until the next time we see you, it's always a pleasure having you with us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, and if you've got something to say, we want to hear it in the comments.